Good afternoon and welcome back everybody to another rendition of the VH virtual event space. Really excited to be welcoming Andre Brown to the virtual event space. Andre, what's going on? How are you doing today? Good, man. How's everything going with you? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Can't complain. We're really excited. I'm excited about this. Uh, Andre's going to be talking about posing men for portraits. And I'm super excited about that because I feel like Andre's going to do us justice over here. He's going to represent the men over here. You know, we always we <laughs> get put on the back burner over here. You know, we never, we never get en enough recognition in the posing fields and stuff like that. So I'm excited to see what you have to say about it. I uh, want to give a huge shout out and thanks to our sponsor for the event, Stella Pro Lights. Uh, Janine, who is in the background, thank you so much for setting this up with Andre. Uh, otherwise, like we said, Andre is going to take it away. If you have any questions with Zoom, use the Q&A chat feature. Uh, otherwise, live stream Facebook, please feel free to drop any questions or comments in the comment section below. Otherwise, Andre, welcome. Thanks for being here. And uh, the floor is yours. Take it away. All right, cool. Well, what's going on, everybody? My name is Andre Brown. I thank you for taking the time today to, to pop in and listen to, to my chat on posing for men's portraits. Um, so before we get started, a little bit about me. I am an Atlanta-based wedding and portrait photographer. Um, I started my photography career back in 2015. I began as a Canon shooter, and I'm still a Canon shooter. Go Team Canon, right? And uh, currently I'm shooting with the R5 and the RF lenses. So um, for any of you thinking about making that switch, do so because the lenses and the cameras are truly amazing. Um, also, I'm a brand ambassador for MagMod as well as Visual for Presets. And I am a Stella Pro Lights champion of light. So um, thanks again to Stella for uh, sponsoring this event and uh, truly love the product. So if you guys haven't checked it out, please do go check it out. Um, also, I've been fortunate enough to win a few WPPI awards and uh, most recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago in WPPI and those portraits have predominantly been, um, <clears throat> excuse me, those portraits have been predominantly men's portraits. So um, I think that's kind of where things have started to uh, shine a little bit of light on me in terms of posing men and men's portraits. But, um, you know, I truly, I appreciate the recognition there as well. Um, obviously, I'm a speaker because I'm here you're listening to me. And um, I also host my own workshops, uh, the Embrace workshops, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on as we start to get down into the presentation. So this image is, is the first image that I guess uh, kind of put me on the map when it came to men's portraits. Um, I shot this image many years back and this was kind of, this was a defining moment in my own style of photography. Um, up until that point, I had basically been doing the stuff that I saw on the night. Like keep in mind, when I first started photographing weddings, um, I had never been to a wedding as a guest. Um, you know, I've never been in a wedding. I'm not in, I wasn't in one of those friend groups where people were just, you know, getting married all the time. So I really didn't have any basis to go off of. So I was mainly shooting the stuff that I saw on the night at the time, um, which is ironic because my career prior to photography was in music and entertainment. And I'd been on a ton of photo shoots and you know, seeing the styling and things of that nature. But um, to that point, for weddings, I just assumed that weddings needed to look a particular way. So I went to the biggest source that I knew of weddings at the time, which was the knot, and uh, started to get my influences from there. And uh, that was back in 2015 again. And, you know, let's look at some of the portraits um, that I was taking back in 2015. So as you can see, this groomsman portrait, it's stark contrast from the previous image that I showed you guys. Um, but at the time, you know, you know, this is this is the work that I was producing. And it was the work that a lot of people were producing back then, as well as even, you know, people starting out now. So um, this is kind of the foundation of where I started. So when you see my images now, I know a lot of people, they see the images like, oh, my God, you know, you do, you know, such great work. 
and all of that stuff just comes over time. So, you know, don't get discouraged because this started here. So, you know, keep that in mind as you're out there shooting and you're trying to, you know, uh, develop your style and, and transition. But um, let me take you through some more images from 2015 and, and years later. So, again, cheesy groomsman portrait. Um, look how my groom is posed. Like, geez, he looks terrible, absolutely terrible. And you know, that's that's my job as a photographer. At the time, I didn't know how to um, correct those things on him or his groomsmen in order to be able to create a uh, better portrait. So same thing here, standard portraits, terrible light, terrible uh, uh, choice of location with all of the color cast. Um, same party here, I don't know, I don't know what I was doing back then, but you know, needless to say, I'm happy that I've had uh, progress over the years. And as you can see, as we kind of got through the year, you know, this eventually turned to this, which is, you know, night and day for the most part, but still not where I am today. And, um, you know, but again, it's, it's a journey. Don't be hard on yourself. If uh, you're not where you want to be today, it's a journey and you'll get there through time. So 2016, men's, solo men's portraits. This is, this is what I had. I had a little bit more style um, than the, the previous year, as you can see. Um, oh my God, I don't know what was going on with my colors back then. But <laughs> it was completely terrible. But again, over time, things change, you start to develop uh, a sense of style and in a direction that you wanna go in with portraits. And this is completely different than, you know, some of the first images that I showed you from 2015. Even the group images, although the lighting is, is bad with the, the dappled light, it still looks a lot cleaner, even though it's a basic, basic portrait, right? And, you know, uh, I'm known for those stylized group photos. And I mean, I was, I've been doing them for a very long time. And as you can see, again, the progression, I don't know what I had going on here. These guys, you know, they look like they're ready for a hoedown, but you know, uh, they love them. And that's all that mattered at that particular time. So as we start to move a little bit forward, then, you know, I started to want to add a little bit more style to the photo. So, um, this, yes, I have, I have a little bit of style going on here, but this groom, can't even remember his name, but, um, you know, I love, I love the cut of his suit and everything. We had a beautiful location in Savannah, Georgia, and, um, I wanted to do something a little bit more classy, kind of class it up than the things that I had done in the past. And, you know, I, I you see, I have him leaning on the rail there, got my directional light coming in from from the window, just something a little bit more casual instead of something extremely formal, which is what I was used to seeing um, and on you know, the nod and things like wedding wire back then. Um, and then our photo here on the right, um, again, just trying to you know, do something to give him a little bit more style so he doesn't look you know, super stiff. But again, there's so many things wrong with this particular portrait. And um, I'll come back a little bit later if I don't have one that, that matches that to, uh, to show you the things that I think are, are wrong with this image and how I would change them now. So as we start to move again, a little bit more through the year, 2000 and, um, 2016, portraits just start to get a little bit better. This is a um, wedding prep photo of one of my grooms. You know, good directional light, not this uh, mixed light that we have here on the left hand side, but good directional light. One, uh, one color of light inside of the, the room. Um, since, as you can see here on the left hand side of the room space, I have that ambient light coming in, um, but a lot cleaner light and a lot better stylized overall. So then now we go into 2000 and 
17 and you know I'm, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable trying to you know direct my my grooms and my my clients because you know as it was mentioned earlier that a lot of the focus on wedding days or just portraits in general are on women right nobody takes the time to think about what's going on with the guy think about it in in theory the second shooter who is the weaker photographer goes to the groom and takes the portraits a lot of times when um when we're starting out or we don't necessarily have a community of photographers that we work with um we get the we get a new photographer that comes on and comes work and comes and works with us and we send them to the groom and likely if they're a new photographer then their portraits are not going to be as strong as yours um but keep in mind that the groom is a huge part of making the decision of you know whether or not you get hired as a photographer yes as men we don't like to be photographed like we hate taking pictures i do this for a living and i hate taking pictures right but me when i'm photographing a groom who um who just doesn't want to be on camera i take good portraits of him and as you start to show him the portraits of himself and he looks good in the portraits he'll start to loosen up and he'll get into it a lot more versus being irritable and uh, just kind of wanting to get the, the portraits done. So um, this here is a hotel here in Atlanta and they have like a, a speakeasy kind of bar downstairs in the hotel. And, um, you know, the, the groom, he, he likes to drink, he likes whis whiskey. So I took him down there, put out this portrait. It looks like part of it's cut off in my presentation, but um it's a wide shot and um you know just styled him and he ended up loving this portrait you know um and after that the day just kind of went a, a little bit smoother so um here we have another this is at the uh, higher museum here in atlanta but just a good clean clean photo you don't have to do very much to um, to style a guy when you're photographing a guy. The ladies, you know, we have to worry about things being dainty and, you know, super feminine. And guys, yes, um, we want that masculinity. Like if you see my groom here, he has his hand on his lapel, fist is balled up, giving that impression of just being strong, chest out, shoulders back. And it's the little things in men's portraits that actually um that that set the portrait off to make the guy look masculine you don't have to do a bunch of different poses as, as we start to go through this you'll see the poses are very similar hands in pockets hands on the pail um hands on the button of the jacket leaning against the wall doing any of those com um those combinations as well as creative props inside of the camera in order to take the you know four or five different poses that i would do with the guy and stretch it out into a full set of really great um images for him so um salty this got cut off but as you can see we have um we have our a, a groomsman portrait here yes i take the standard shots but i almost always do some sort of stylized portrait of the guys again these guys like to drink so this was the bar inside of the hotel where we did their prep right so after we got rid of after we got through all of the um all of the formal portraits then we just you know we went somewhere that would speak to them this portrait is going to speak to them a whole lot more look how comfortable they are and for me that's what it's all about with posing men most of the time i said hey you know when you, you know i want you to stand on one um stand on both legs but drop all of that weight to one side but just be casual the same way that you would be if you were just kind of shooting the breeze with your friends right um most times the moment the camera gets on us we kind of you know, stiffen up and tighten up and um that looks uncomfortable but as you can see in this image they're in their element they're in the bar, they're just kind of hanging out, 
from there, you figure out where the good light is. As you can see, there's light coming in, window light coming in from the left side of the camera, and it's filling in on everybody that's there, right? And from there, you just pose everybody in a, a position that looks comfortable, that looks like I don't care. And I, I tell that to my clients all the time. Stand there and drop all that weight to one side, like you're just hanging out with your friends, and just don't be don't be too serious. Look at my groom's chest. It's not super poked out, you know, shoulders back. He's leaning there on his groomsman's shoulder. All that latest, all that weight is dropped on his right leg. There's a slight bend in the left leg, and he just looks comfortable. And that's what it's all about when you're, you're posing men. Just be sure that they look comfortable and that they feel comfortable. Um, prep photos, more more prep photos. Um, throughout my time teaching photography, um, I noticed that pain point, second shooters, I hear it all the time. Well, I don't know what to do with the guy, you know? Um, but again, it's just good composition. Do things to add as your interest. So even though the poses for men are pretty simple, right? Cuff length, adjusting the watch, lapels, things of that nature, even if you're cycling through this stuff on a regular basis, do things like I did here and add that, that portrait in the background to give it a pop of color. So although it's probably similar to something that I'd done previously in the day, it looks completely different because I, I gave it that visual interest um, from framing him inside of the frame of the colorful engine background. And again, um, the, the contrast of the images that I showed you that were 2016 to the way that things transitioned here in 2017, good light and you know good composition. As you can see through the presentation, I do a lot of creative crops like the one I did on the left-hand side. Um, there's not too much difference in what I'm doing with my groom in the image in the left and the image in the right. Um, hand placement is just about the same. Obviously, on the right, he's holding the button of his jacket. Shoulders down, chest out, nice little grin at the camera. And the only thing that I changed really in the photo on the left is that his hands are up, he's adjusting the watch, and he's looking at me. I don't overthink it when you're, when you're there trying to create um, portraits of men. You don't have to do a ton of stuff in order to get a good result. So here becomes the, the transition in my photography style. So this was in the 2017 into 2018 and the poses the poses changed the lighting changed and all of that good stuff so whereas before i was only doing things that are that are standard like the photo here on the right oops this image now i'm doing things to style out stylize the images a little bit you know, in this image, it appears like that he's walking up the, the stairs and he's looking back at somebody, right? Adjusting the glasses. It doesn't necessarily have to just be um, uh, basic images like the ones that we have here on the right. Although it's a good, good, clean image, right? Great sellable image, you know, depending on who your client is and how they are style-wise, um, this groom would appreciate that photo more than the actual standard image that I showed you previously. His suit is styled, um, like custom suit, fancy bow tie, fancy watch. Read the room when, when it comes to dealing with your clients because their own personal style will tell you how to guide them into to different things. Could I have done something similar with this guy? Yeah. Um, but this guy is definitely going to appreciate it more. So um, know your client, figure out what things make them comfortable, what things excite them in order to be able to kind of pull from your arsenal to put them in, in poses or positions 
that will create great portraits. Actually, I thought I had one more of him, but um, yeah. So again, these guys, rowdy bunch. There's only so much rowdy we can get going on up on this uh, this helipad. But if you look at the image, every single guy is posed completely different. Well, for the most part, I do see these guys are on the right hand side, but typically that's how it is. All of the guys are posed in a completely different pose. And these are the gambit of poses that I end up doing with guys. So if you end up seeing any of my group portraits, they're typically all the guys are doing something completely different. And it's all just from the arsenal of the poses that I that I pull. If you look at the guy here. Second from the uh, left, he has his hands on the buttons of his jacket, right? But if you look at the guy all the way on the right, it's virtually the same pose. The only thing I did was have him put one hand on the button in his jacket and one hand in his pocket. Each of these guys is, has a, a little nuance that I would do with um, when I'm, I'm posing a guy or a group of guys. Each one of these guys is doing something virtually different, even if it's just the way that they're turned. My groom in the front is turned completely straight on. Two guys to the right, and he's doing the same exact pose in terms of hand placement, but his body is turned a little bit more to the camera right, which ultimately makes his pose look completely different than what the groom's pose is, although it's the exact same pose. Oh, there's the image from before. So again, <clears throat> even now, this was kind of in the transition of you know what I had going on in terms of styling and, and posing men. And there are a few things that I would love to have done differently in this, like add a, a backlight. So I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, but um, camera, his arm, this camera left, I'm not getting any light through there. So Ultimately, I would have loved to have done that in order to you know, make the image itself a little bit more interesting, get a little bit of separation from the background. But if you look at how he's posed there, he's really not posed any different than the guy that's on the far right of this image that I spoke about earlier. Exact same pose. The bodies are just turned a little bit different. And you know, obviously this groom is stylized a, a lot different um as he's the focus of the actual wedding day but same exact pose as the guy on the right hand side um i spoke about creative crops earlier <clears throat> and i think it's important to add the creative crops in um I, I think mainly that comes from me being a wedding photographer and focusing on um album design and needing the variety and uh to be able to add the pages in the album design right but again if you look at my groom here on the left hand side you look at the guy here on the left hand side it's effectively the same exact pose one person is doing it better yes but two it's the same exact pose but i added a creative crop to add a little bit more visual interest in it so again, you don't have to go in and overthink these poses with guys. You don't need to have an arsenal of 20 different poses um, for guys. Even with, with brides out either, just be mindful of what you're doing in terms of um, cropping, um, composition, and those elements will help give you a completely different look for your images overall. So even though the poses are semi, um repetitive they they do not look the same because you're adding little elements or you're changing little elements of the images in order to um to make the overall look of the images change same here with this groom the image on the right same image as my excuse me same pose as my groom here in the front but again Stylized a little bit different, expression is a little bit different. I could have had both, I could have had this groom do the exact same thing in the portraits 
and they would look like two completely different images because effectively, you know, they are. Um, he has a more serious stoic face here. The expression is also something that you have to keep in mind when you're you're posing men or posing people in general. But you can't have the guy in like a super strong, you know, fierce pose and then a big Kool-Aid smile. Those things just typically do not go together. So you have to be sure that the expression that your client has on their face is complementary to whatever the pose it is that they have going on. And again, not just men. These are the groom's sons. And although they are, you know, all standing there, basically, you know, doing the same thing as you see in some of my other portraits, it looks great. It looks great on the hand in the pocket. The gentleman on the left-hand side does not have on a jacket to hold his button, but I have his hand draped across. It's exactly the same thing as if he had a jacket on and I threw buttons on, um, excuse me, I threw his hand on the button. So just because he doesn't have a jacket doesn't mean that you can't, you know, do the same things because it's all about hand placement at that point. Um, in order to, again, make your client feel comfortable, make your client look good at the same time. So again, as I mentioned earlier, you know, groups. This is a very standard group photo. Just the same as some of the ones that I showed earlier with the guys all stacked across the front. And yet it looks a little bit different than that. It just doesn't look as, as plain as the other ones. Um, expression plays a big part on it all, um, just like I mentioned earlier as well. So um, don't be afraid to do things that are considered to be basic. Maybe you don't take all the guys and you pose them out in, in a straight line stack them a little bit we had no choice but to do that here because obviously we had you know some kids and it was a height differential but you can do the same thing with you know the groom and groomsmen and be able to create a, a, a more visually interesting photo than all of the people staggered out in a straight line Oops. Sitting poses, I get asked about these all the time as well. Um, again, look how comfortable he is. If he and I were having a conversation, that's probably how he would be sitting. You know, I'm having a conversation with you guys and I'm, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty relaxed, comfortable using my armrest the same way I would in, in, any, um, in any situation. So here's the same thing. He's placed on the steps, comfortable, leaning forward toward the camera. So he's engaged, so he has that look of confidence. And trust me, he was not feeling confident in this photo. I know because this is my, my nephew. And, you know, he hated life the entire time we were doing these portraits. But you wouldn't know that from the way that he's posed in the, um, in the image because I talked to him. Like, look, just sit the same way that you would when you were talking to your friends. Lean in, get comfortable, engage with the camera, and then just look over at me. More portraits, same thing as earlier. Hand in the pocket, um, other hand on the button of the jacket. This time I have him looking away and um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, a, a solid portrait. There's nothing to, to overthink. Image on the right, <clears throat> leaning against the wall with his hand on the buttons of his, of his jacket, the same way that I had the gentleman standing up earlier and the hands on the button of the jacket. All of these things come together to be able to create unique images and uh, visually interesting images for your clients. And this one, I really wanted to focus on um, the, the composition of it all. It's the same exact pose, but the crop is different. That's the only difference in these two images, and they still look like two completely different images. 
So that goes back to what I was saying earlier about not, not focusing on the fact that, you know, oh, well, I keep doing the same thing over and over and, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Use cropping, composition, all of those things to your advantage to be able to create um, a, a great set of images. The, although this is not an album spread, these two go together perfect in some sort of album spread. Ties, ties are ties are great to give the guy something to do with their hands. Um, that's huge, at least for me, when I'm posing, um, when I have to be photographed the one time a year that I do get photographed. Um, but give the hands something to do. That's the whole purpose of me um, having the hands in the pocket, uh, fingers on the button of the jacket, both hands in the pocket, grab the lapel, give the hand something to do versus just being draped down by the side because that's not visually interesting, right? Plus we wanna be able to create those, those angles, right? The triangles all over the place so that one, the person is comfortable, but two, they look like they're, they're doing something. The images have, again, so much more visual interest when there's angles involved. So um, let's see if I can go up way back. Let's see, oops. Let's try to go back here. The image of my groom here, it's not much different than the image that uh, I just showed you here a few moments ago. Groom looking at the watch, although it's two completely different images. I can't stress enough the fact that, again, you don't have to do a whole slew of poses on a guy in order to be able to create that visual interest. These are simple portraits, you know, simple poses, great light. And again, clients are happy and the images look stellar. Not to toot my own horn there. <laughs> but yeah, these images, they, they look great. Hand in the pocket, hand on the button, showing off his, his watch. That's typically the one thing that I do if uh, my guys have a, a nice watch on, that's an accessory that I want to be able to highlight. So that's typically the hand that I'm going to place on the button of the jacket or on the lapel. So then that way we can show it off versus having that tucked in to the pocket and um, not being able to show it off. He paid for it. He's wearing it. I'm pretty sure he's proud of it. Um, so we want to be sure that we do what we can to be able to add those into the um, into the actual images. Same thing here, exact same thing. Showing off his watch, and then the other one, his watch isn't you know showing as much as I would like, but his jacket was a little bit big, so. Um, Again, same exact poses back to back, but look like two completely different sets of images. So <clears throat> this was the image that I won the award for in 2020 at WPPI. Um, I know that again, the image is a little bit crap, but I have 19 people here. And for the most part, they're all in um, very different poses, but none of it is any different than the things that I said earlier. Posing the guys with the, the hands across the front, hands in the pockets, lapel, um, you know, leaning on someone or something. You just want to be able to create that. Um, that imbalance, never having the legs, the arms or anything doing the exact same thing at the same time, right? So that's why you'll see most of the time I'll have a hand in the pocket and then a hand on the lapel or a hand in the pocket, hand on the butt, 
hand in the pocket, other hands um, straight down. Um, very rarely do you see me do something like this where the groom or the, the, the guy in general is, uh, is having both hands on the lapel. But even if it is, I'll always kind of stagger it out a little bit so that the hands are not mirrored. The legs are never mirroring either. Um, there's always some sort of bend in one leg. I always tell my clients, be sure, although I want you standing firm on both legs, I want you to drop all your weight to one side. That changes the posture from being you know, super uptight to being pretty cool and laid back and a lot more comfortable. So um, let's start with the guy on the far left that you can actually see. Hand on the lapel, and the other hand is actually um, leaning on the gentleman next to him. So again, creating that, in, that imbalance. Hand on the lapel, other arm on the shoulder of the guy next to him, all his weight is dropped on his left leg, right? Guy next to him, virtually the same thing. Um, except he has his hand in his pocket. I know you can't see it, but I do remember posing this. And that's the thing too, like I pose every single person in all of my group images. I always pose my guys, um, unless they're doing some sort of walking shot. But if they're walking, I give them some instruction and it's always the same instruction. As you walk towards me, just give me a variety of things. Let's start off. You know, unbutton your jacket, button it back up. Take one hand, put it in the pocket, you know, with your, with your hand on the button. Look off to the left, look off to the right. You can make that decision based off of um, if they have a particular side of their face that they like. Um, but the cues are the same for them walking posing as they would be if I just had them static posing as well. This here is probably the best representation of um, the different poses for the guys. Um, I actually just shot this maybe about, you know, two weeks ago or something like that. And as you can see here, all of the guys are doing something completely different. Every single one of them. But as I talked to them and I kind of got to know them, I got to figure out <clears throat> poses that would be suitable for their personalities. I think things like that matter as well. And um, I, I encourage you all that when you're talking to your clients and um, you're, you're kind of going through ideas for the shoot, you know, see, see who they are as people. You know, if you have a guy who is a little bit more, you know, goofy and charismatic, I can't see him posing like, you know, the, the gentleman here in the middle, right? that super serious, he's not gonna wear that well. So the pose has to complement the personality of who your client is. But all of these men, although there are some similarities, each one of them are posed completely different. Everybody here has some sort of triangle going on. Look at the arm shapes on all of the guys, right? The guys who are standing, all of the weight is distributed on where there's a, a, a heavy weight on one leg and the other one, the other one just doesn't have, you know, any weight on it at all. So the principles don't change. And I use these same principles when I'm, I'm posing women. The only difference is, is I'll bend the legs so that there's curve to the lady's body. Guys, we just wanna be sure that they are broad, strong looking, but you know, not to the point where they look completely awkward and uncomfortable. So here are a few images that I took a couple of weeks ago here in studio, just to kind of you know reference what I was talking about with you know the different hand placements and poses. So image on the left, one hand in the pocket, the other hand is just dangling, showing off you know his bracelets, right? Simple pose, you know, uh, head slightly tilted to the side. So again, he just doesn't look straight up and down. 
his cam his uh, shoulders are off from the camera, so not square on, because I want to be able to add those angles for visual interest. Image on the right, hand in the pocket, finger on the button of the jacket, body slightly towards the light. The only thing that's really different from these two images is that the image on the left is more he's turned more towards the by um toward the light. And on the image on the right, he has his hand on the button of his jacket. Yes, the, the, the hand that's in the pocket on the left is different than the pocket on the right, but again, it's virtually the same exact thing. So image on the left, he's standing. And the image on the right, he's sitting down. It's the same stool. The image on the left, if you see his his right shoulder, our left, camera left, we have the triangle going on, add visual interest on, um, on him and his body. Leg on the right hand side is stepped on the stool, again, adding angle. It's not a full body image, but it's adding that angle so that, again, we can get visual interest. On the right, he's sitting. His right arm, our camera left, Got the triangles going on. On the right hand side, we can see between his arm and his body, so that you know we can see a waistline. Although, you know, it's super important that we are sure that women have their waistline. Guys, we have a waistline too. And I definitely want to see more of mine than what I can actually see right now. So um, be mindful of that to not make your guys look boxy just because of the fact that they're men, right? Here is uh, my social media links, as well as links to uh, some of my sponsors here. At the bottom, you can sign up and get good deals there. And uh, be sure to follow me on social media, on um, my photography um, page, which is Andre Brown Photo, and the link for my um, workshop, the Embrace Workshop. Hey, Scott, we got you back. I'm all finished up. Wonderful. I, I am back. I am back. Yes. Thank you, Andre. Thank you so much. That was a ton of great information. And, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to start in, in finding out, you know, you, you referenced your early on kind of, you know, introduction into photography 2016 and, you know, kind of figuring everything out. What do you think was the big determining or deciding factor in kind of finding your your creative vision and and kind of you know really getting that underneath your belt how did you go about that so yeah i referenced that slightly earlier and then I, that i would come back to it because i knew it would come up in question so yeah like the early the early days as i mentioned i had never been to a wedding before and um i didn't really have a barometer on you know what was acceptable so i went to the popular wedding websites to figure out, you know, what are people doing? What should I be doing? Well, I wasn't happy with the stuff that I was getting. So as I mentioned, I spent a good deal of my adult life working in the entertainment business. And I had been fortunate enough to be on, you know, sets for, you know, movies and television shows. And, you know, when some of the people that we were working with, um, they did magazine shoots. And it was very editorial. It was super stylized. And it, although I wasn't doing photography at the time, I had no interest in being a photographer, by the way, back then, right? <laughs> um, when it was all said and done, and I'm, I'm taking these photos, I'm not happy with what it was that I saw, but I knew I liked that stuff when I saw it. And it wasn't until that you know first image that I mentioned that was, um, became pivotal in defining my style. Once I took that image and I put it out there and people liked it, then I wasn't stuck in the mindset that, oh, everything had to look like all of the stuff that I saw on the wedding blogs. People do appreciate the fact that wedding photography isn't in this one particular box. I looked in that box because that was my reference at the time, but it helped me to understand that there are people out there who like things that are beyond that when it comes to um, weddings and wedding photography. Sure. And so, you know, I think one of the, one of the really 
you kind of hinted on this with that kind of answer was, you know, talking about finding your style and realizing that you can kind of think outside of the box. One of the things that definitely you can see through your photos and you sort of hinted on it and talked about was the fact that you're not really expecting everybody to portray, you know, when you think about maybe wedding photography or portrait photography, you always think about, you know, the guy saying smile for the photo, you know, that, that stereotypical like school, school portrait photographer who's sitting the kids down and going, all right, now right. smile, cheese, you know, mom and dad want to get it. And I think especially going back to sort of that mindset that you were talking about, you know, with, with men, especially, we already hate being in photos to begin with. Most of us aren't You're the right. most photogenic people in the world. You know, we, we don't want to be in them, you know, so you talked about getting to know people and kind of breaking that barrier down. How, how much time do you typically spend with people on that? You know, obviously in, in a groom's case, you spend quite a bit of, of time with them, getting to know them a little bit, but you know, now you, you bring in those group shots where you're really capturing those emotions really well. How much time do you give to everybody? We'll call them the supporting cast, you know, to, to, get, <laughs> to, to, to get to elicit those, you know, you know images. So, you know, the group photos, they can actually take a while, you know, mainly because, as you know, weddings, groups, like people are just hard to deal with or they want to make your job, you know, a little bit crazy at times, right? But a lot of the decision on what it is that I'm going to do in terms of group photo, immediately, one, I already have a connection with my groom because we did the engagement session, right? So you can kind of, you know, read the situation from there. But two, it comes down to styling, right? If I walk in a room and I have a groom and groomsmen who have, um, who have uh, warehouse suits that are just super big, nothing tailored, right? There's very little expectation made like of the fact that they want to be in front of camera. Like when you're looking at people who took time to put themselves together, they're well groomed, like you know that they're there to be photographed and they're there to be photographed in a particular way, right? Um, but for the guys that are just like, you know, it's clean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, one, it's not my client. I do get those guys, right? But you know, one, that's not my client. And two, um, you know that they're gonna be the ones in the photo that's that's like this, right? But even when you do have those situations, like read the room, you know, as you're mingling with the guys throughout the day, you'll be able to tell who can pull off what poses, who can't, who can pull off what other poses. Um, if you pose somebody and it just doesn't work for them, swap that pose with another pose and you know pose somebody else in that manner that can handle it without it looking super forced or uncomfortable great great i love that so matt s is joining us here on zoom thank you matt uh would love to know andre which raw processor you're using with your r5 and if you've got any tips for locking in accurate skin tones um, I get the skin tone question a lot. Um, really? No, I mean, for the most part, one, I shoot on auto, you know what I'm saying? And then if I'm in, I'm in Lightroom, so I'm using, um, I'm using the Adobe products, right? I haven't touched Capture One at all, but um, if the skin tones are too red, too orange, pull them back. Like that was something that I really, I really had to learn over the years, right? When you're looking at images and you're like, oh, I want my colors to be bright and vibrant. So you take the saturation, boom, and you take the uh and you take the vibrance and boom, right? The uh the channels down below with the luminosity and saturation and everything, pull those back, you know. Um, if you want to even out if the skin tones are um too red, like brown skin tones are too red, you know, go into the luminosity channel and and pull it down and just be sure that you know you balance the luminosity with the saturation to be sure that the, the skin tones come out perfectly but you know it's it's really not that hard trust me i think people overthink it so thanks for the question but you're probably just overthinking it for sure 
Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Andre, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. And, you know, if anything, I took a, I took a lot of great tips away from this. I realized what, what a terrible, probably person to photograph I am, because I think, <laughs> I think you described me accurately as the guy who, you know, just picks up a shirt and goes, sniffs it and says, I think, I think this will work today. <laughs> so, so you definitely nailed me on the head there. Uh, Andre, again, thanks so much for being here. I uh, want to give a huge thanks to Stella Pro Lights as well for sponsoring the event. Uh, as always, this has been another rendition of the b &H Virtual Event Space. Andre, thank you. Everybody at home, thank you. We'll catch you all next time.